This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Good evening. Welcome to the Jamie Glazoff Moment. Tonight, Janet Jackson's surrender to Sharia. My friends, at the recent MTV EMAs, that's the Europe Music Awards, Janet Jackson was honored at the awards, and uh, that's a great thing, you know, very talented uh, musician and singer, uh, etc. And uh, all props go to her for everything that she has achieved and continues to achieve. Having said that, very peculiar speech by Janet Jackson. Now, before I tell you about the speech, let me just tell you a little bit about Janet Jackson's past. There was some kind of Muslim marriage that Jack, uh, Janet uh, had gotten herself into. And what's interesting and telling is that we don't know a lot. You know, it's very interesting that with all these entertainment magazines and gossip magazines, oh yeah, they'll tell you every ingredient about Justin Bieber. They'll tell you all about Jennifer Lopez. But not too much about this. So Janet Jackson, we know, had been married for about five years to Qatari business tycoon Wissam Al Mana. And so we know a little bit, you know, I, I've, you know, I follow what's been going on with Janet Jackson, you know, been doing some research. So we know that Janet Jackson in some interviews uh, has talked about how she felt like a prisoner during that marriage. She felt that her life was sheltered. She felt hidden from her family and her friends. She felt like she couldn't be herself anymore. So if you do the research and look this up and see her interviews and what some family have said and friends have said, overall we know that her self-determination, her individuality had ended during that marriage with this Muslim individual who was imposing during that time what some of the reports said as Muslim traditions. But nowhere did I read anything about Sharia law, but we know that that's what it is. We also know that there was abuse, um, but there have only been references to verbal abuse. Now, this is very cloudy. I wish I could tell more. I wish that some people would write in and say, oh no, Jamie, you're wrong. It was this and that, or it was this and that. Please correct me. What happened here? But we don't know. We don't know a lot because it's not talked about. Janet hasn't shared all that much, and very interestingly enough, the media didn't poke into this and look into it and investigate it and ask a lot of questions. But we know overall that Janet Jackson had, through this marriage, gotten herself into the claws and grasps of Sharia law. Now, you can even do the Google image searches if you want. Uh, you know, look into this. We know that Janet was also wearing hijab, and it was a combination of hijab and burqa and niqab. It was, you know, her face was seen, but there was, uh, let's just say, Muslim covering. And uh, it would just be great to ask. It would be important to ask, was this willingly? Was this something you wanted to do? Um, but anyway, so we know to the extent that Janet had suffered in the grasp of Sharia law during this time. We know some of these things that she had said and revealed that I have just uh, discussed. And our hearts go out to Janet Jackson for what she experienced. And my heart goes out to Janet Jackson for what she experienced. Now, at the MTV EMAs, now that we know this, and I'm watching them, Janet gets up and starts giving a talk, a speech, about the abused women of the world. Now, after having suffered abuse in her Muslim marriage with Almana, and after all this sh and suffering at the hands of Sharia that came with that marriage, Janet Jackson does not mention Sharia law. She doesn't say anything. She just, she starts, in terms of that, she just starts doing the typical hashtag me too thing, and I'm watching, everybody's you know, watching. And so she's talking about inequality and the rights of women, etc. And I would just say that what an opportunity that was. What, what a golden moment that was. Janet Jackson, if you're gonna talk about the abuse of women, especially with what you had experienced, 
you would think that maybe you would say a couple very important things for the women and girls suffering worldwide under Sharia law. But instead, Janet Jackson, if you're watching this by any chance, you say, after saying how you know, you're against gender inequality and all that stuff, and all that stuff is great, but Sharia is not mentioned, Janet Jackson, you end up saying that we need to live in a world where all faiths must be accepted. All faiths must be accepted. So after everything that you have experienced, your conclusion and your message to the world is that all faiths must be accepted. So let me ask, is it the Sharia faith that you're referring to, that you had suffered under? Ladies and gentlemen, you see where I'm going with this. And uh, I was very saddened by this development. I was very saddened by uh, Janet Jackson's quote-unquote speech. And I'll just say, because I'm familiar with this matter, with Janet Jackson's personal story, I know that you're not supposed to hold your breath. But I was hoping, perhaps because of what Janet had experienced, what she knows, that maybe she would use that moment to maybe make a statement on behalf of the women in the world suffering under gender apartheid, under Sharia law. To maybe reach out her hand and say something on behalf of the Iranian women right now that are being raped, that are being tortured, that are being imprisoned, that are being executed in Iranian jails, on Iranian streets, for daring not to wear the hijab. We know that Maide Hojabri, an 18-year-old Iranian, Iranian girl, is in prison today because she was on social media without a hijab. We think about Aksa Parvez, the 16-year-old Canadian girl, Muslim girl, but she was, she was in Toronto, Aksa Parvez, 16 years old, in Canada. Muslim girl, choked to death by her father with a hijab, the one she was supposed to be wearing but that she did not want to wear, murdered by her father for not wearing the hijab. Amina Muz Ali, a Christian woman in Somalia who Muslims murdered because she wasn't wearing a hijab. These are just a few examples that represent the thousands, the tens of thousands, the hundreds of thousands, the millions of Muslim women and Muslim girls who are suffering in terms of forced coverings, in terms of child marriage, in terms of forced marriage, in terms of segregation, in terms of acid attacks, in terms of honor killings, and all the barbarities that come with Sharia law. Muslim women, Muslim girls, and yes, non-Muslim women and non-Muslim girls, the Kafirs, the unbelievers, so many women in the non-Muslim world also suffering from jihad and rape jihad and, and Sharia law. And what a golden opportunity that w this would have been for Janet Jackson who has suffered at the hands of this ideology. But instead, she doesn't say anything. And you know, you would think, because I, I wrote about this on social media, and some people were writing in and saying, oh, she's afraid, and then we discussed what Stockholm Syndrome is about, and she's, she's traumatized, she's afraid. Okay, again, our hearts go out to Janet Jackson. And of course, I'm not an idiot. I understand the bravery it takes. Because if she had said, you know, the, the, the left, it controls the boundaries of our discourse. The unholy alliance between the left and Islam, it controls the boundaries of our discourse. You can't say anything about Islam or Sharia now and, and with it not going without any consequences. Yeah, her career would have been gone. She would have been labeled a racist and an Islamophobe and a white supremacist even, you know, even though she's a, a black American. Who knows what she would be slandered as and libeled as. You know, today they even call Candace Owens uh, and, and, and many of these uh, brave black Americans that are, that are, you know, pushing for the freedom for blacks to leave the Democratic plantation. They're even calling, the left is even calling black Americans um, white supremacists and all this. It's, it's just completely absurd. But my point is that I understand that it would take a lot of courage for Janet Jackson instead of just simply saying gender inequality to actually take a stand 
against Sharia and to reach out for the victims that suffer under Sharia law, to reach out and say something on behalf of Muslim women and Muslim girls who suffer under Islam. Yeah, I get it. She would have been libeled and slandered and uh, made a non-person and, and uh, she would have been pushed out of the industry, etc. Okay, so that takes a lot of courage. I get it. And, uh, but why engage in the Stockholm Syndrome? Why engage in the next step and actually enforce and enable cultural relativism? and moral relativism and religious relativism by saying that all faiths must be accepted. So that means that Sharia must be accepted. And what faiths are we referring to? to? Are we just talking about all ideologies? I mean, there's a Nazi faith, there's a communist faith. But okay, so the Sharia faith. Let me just add that the reliance of the traveler, which is the manual, uh, classical, you know, the classic manual, of Sharia law, it's endorsed by Al Azhar University, it's the pro most prominent uh, Sunni institution in the world. The reliance of the traveler teaches that Muslim parents can kill their children if their children dishonor Islam. Must we really accept all faiths and ideologies? Just a very sad moment, ladies and gentlemen, that brought me a lot of sadness, and um, because we work 24 7 on behalf of all the women and girls that are suffering under Islamic gender apartheid. And for Janet Jackson to have engaged in this after what she experienced is very telling. I have a book that's coming out, Jihadist Psychopath, and uh, it's exactly what this is about. I have studied how psychopaths romance and seduce and ensnare and capture and devour their victims and how they keep them in captivity after they have tricked them. Now that's what psychopaths do. But I show that what the jihadist psychopath is doing today, what Islamic supremacists are doing to the West today, is exactly that step by step. How Islamic supremacism is taking over the West today is exactly how, she, how psychopaths capture their victims. And so my point here is, is the Stockholm Syndrome that we see in this Janet Jackson narrative is exactly what's happening in the West today. Get my book, read it, and you can equip yourself with knowledge. And with that knowledge of what I show, we can all be better equipped to defend our civilization, defend our freedoms, and also to defend the suffering women and children who are being oppressed by the worst monstrous barbarities under Islamic law, let us not forget about them. They should be in our hearts every second of the day, as all suffering people should be who are persecuted and oppressed under totalitarianism. We'll see you soon on the Jamie Glazoff Moment. Good night.